Hello and welcome. Today I'm in the remote corner of Northwest Ohio and in a fairly isolated place to try to go into outer space. So anyway, let me show you what I put together to make this happen. This is a project I have been working on for about a year. And before I could get any valuable data, there were many failures. Weather balloon I released twice every day to probe the atmosphere for change in conditions. But there is nothing stopping anyone from releasing their own with FAA approval. And I'm definitely not the first to try it. Engineering a payload is not difficult, but as you will see, there is challenges and complications. I started with the Uline Styrofoam box, 11 inches by nine, by nine, that I later cut in half. It's uh, one and a half inches thick and provide insulation for the instrument on board. Instruments that originally included a Geiger counter, accelerometer, GPS path tracker, air pressure data logger, temperature recorder able to go down minus 150 Celsius, electromagnetic field recorder, carbon dioxide level, and three GoPro cameras. And to keep track of its motion, a spot trace GPS and an iPhone 7. Unfortunately, this turns out to be too heavy for the balloon and I had to revise my payload and downgrade. Helium can lift about 28 grams per cubic feet, and since one cubic feet is about 28 liters, one liter lifts about a gram. One cubic meter lifts one kilogram. Because gas is compressed and balloon expand, it is possible to calculate the maximum payload weight, volume of helium needed, lift and altitude achievable, and duration of flight. For that, I use a high altitude science online calculator, which gives you a good idea of all the parameters for a successful flight. But you can also figure it out with the gas expansion law, burst diameter given by the manufacturer, and the volume of helium used. Next, you'll just wait for the perfect weather condition. And for that, I use the weather balloon prediction site, CUSF, landing prediction 2.5, link in the description. And for me, the perfect condition came on August 5th, and I drove to CISO, Ohio to release my balloon. I choose this spot because there is a lot of farmland and no airport or air traffic nearby. The payload carried a gaggy counter, the cryo thermometer, yeah, it's gonna get cold up there, so hopefully that doesn't push stop. I don't know it yet, but it did push stop, and I did not record anything. Air pressure recorder, a GPS logger, the accelerometer, a GoPro camera facing down with its battery, and one iPhone 7. Ever sent an iPhone in space? And on August 5th, at 8.30 a.m., I was finally ready to release my balloon carrying all the scientific equipment. You ever had that feeling, why am I doing all this? Hey, right. here we go. Alright, so I launched at about 8.30 and it looked like it was climbing a bit slower than I wanted to at about 1.5 to 2 meters per second. Remember kids, the only difference between screwing around and science is writing it down. Updated one minute ago, uh, not too far from where I'm at. The balloon stayed airborne for six and a half hours, slowly climbing to an altitude I calculated to be somewhere around 36,500 meters or about 119,000 feet. The balloon finally burst after 335 minutes airborne. And here's a piece of it in space. At this point, there is not enough air to inflate the parachute, so this is a free fall. It took 48 minutes to reach the ground, and it was a brutal descent. 
As the payload and camera tumbles, we can glimpse at space, and here's a few snapshots of our planets and its upper atmosphere. And I also caught a glimpse of the moon. In the final minutes, we can see the parachute fully deployed just before the probe hits the soil crop field. And this is where I landed. As you can see without a GPS, it's pretty much hopeless. And even with a GPS, it took a good 20 minutes for me to find it. There it is. Seems mostly intact. That's good. We'll be able to. Really nice. All right. Welcome back, buddy. So exactly what was recorded out of all the instrument on board? As usual with every project, things that normally work fine don't, and things that don't do. And this was no exception. As mentioned before, the cryothermometer stopped immediately after installation in the payload. So unfortunately, no temperature data on this run. The default setting on the accelerometer is set to one point every 50 milliseconds. So after 168,042 points or about two and a half hours, it simply stopped recording. The pressure data recorder worked and recorded 3,225 points, but the data was somehow compromised after 1,824 points. If anyone knows how to fix this bullshit, I'll be very happy to hear it. The GPS track recorder did work, but anything above 20,000 feet is worthless. And at this point, you might as well guess what happened. To be fair, I was expecting that. But not everything was a failure. I did get great footage, and the Geiger counter worked beautifully. It recorded 900 hits per minute at its maximum, and gave it a 6 microsieverts per hour, or about 60 times the normal background. I've never seen anything that about 4 on commercial air travel, so this is a hint at the altitude achieved. Not only that, but it turns out that the radiation level drops above 80 to 90,000 feet, and this recording clearly shows that. After the balloon burst, the rapid descent through this uh, radiation belt is faster than on the way up, obviously. So this seems to be a real thing, and I totally did not know that. Based on this, knowing the ascent speed of about 1.7 meters per second, I can calculate the falling speed before parachute deployment. And based on radiation alone, we arrive at a temporary speed of about 1,000 kilometers per hour or 625 miles per hour, which is ridiculous, really. The maximum altitude can be calculated much the same way based on radiations alone, and I get between 96 and 106,000 feet, which is consistent with previous calculations. So, this is probably not your first YouTube video, and you know what to do. Thumbs up if you like it, subscribe if you want, Patreon, bell, share. I hope to see you again on the next one, and thank you for watching. Damn it! Space Farm.